Welcome and aloha. My name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea program. Today we are going across the sea to China once again. We're going to visit this dynamic and enigmatic country. The title of our program is China's Social Credit System. Being trustworthy is glorious. Being untrustworthy is disgraceful. And my guest is Lawrence Foster. China has begun to rank its citizens and businesses by what has been called a social credit system. Using the motto, being trustworthy is glorious, being untrustworthy is disgraceful. Larry Foster, former dean of William S. Richardson's School of Law at UH, is a China expert who will tell us what it all means. Welcome, Larry. Good to see you. And I understand that you're just back from a visit to China. And I mean, I, I know you are a fluent Mandarin speaker. You've spent a lot of time in China. And most recently, as I said, you just flew back from Shanghai over the weekend. Yes. And uh, before we get into China's social credit system, tell us a little bit about what you were doing in China, in Shanghai especially. Okay. Um, this comes under the category of, of uh, advertising. Uh, <laughs> I, I do legal training programs in China these days. So I was there doing uh, two legal training, day-long legal training programs. Uh, the first one is on legal writing and analysis, and the second one is fundamentals of contract drafting. Uh, and I, they're, they're day-long programs. I, I do them for uh, uh, young Chinese lawyers, if you will. Uh, and then I gave a couple of one-hour talks uh, on a similar topic uh, uh, at, at uh, uh, two different law firms. So the Chinese lawyers want to learn about American law, is what I'm hearing, or is that uh, correct, or is it just... No, <laughs> <laughs> incorrect. No, uh, they want to learn about how to write in English. Okay. Um, because uh, 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 Shanghai in particular is an international commercial center. Yeah. And uh, for better or worse, English is the language of international business. So they're writing memos to uh, uh, Pakistan, France, Germany, U.S., and they're all in English. They're reviewing contracts from all around the world, and they're all in English. Uh, so the, the, the programs I do are not about American law. I see. Uh, but okay. rather about, uh, uh, you know, what, what, what does good legal writing look like? Uh, and again, sort of fundamentals of contract drafting. And how to get, a, how to get along in the legal world. Yes. Uh, well, and, and also sort of how to, uh, 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 the audience may not know this, but you and I taught a course on, uh, contract drafting at, at uh, UH a couple times. And one thing we discovered, a lot of really famous contracts uh, in the US right. are very poorly written. Yeah. Uh, and so the idea is to give them a sense of what a bad contract looks like, but then also teach them how to, uh, how to recognize a bad contract and how to clean up the language. Okay. Uh, that, that, that's interesting. Um, now, let, let's kind of focus on our topic. What, what <laughs> is, China's social credit system. What is, what is that existing now? Where is it going? Sure. Uh, well, let me begin by saying uh, it's not a social credit system, if you will. Uh, I'm not sure where that the word social came about, social credit. Um, the, uh, and that's a term I've heard quite a bit. That's the term that, that everybody in the West uses. Okay. Uh, it turns out that, that uh, uh, the, the Chinese word, and, and the translation of the Chinese word is uh, trustworthiness. Are, are you trustworthy? Uh, okay. It's kind of like uh, you know, going to the Better Business Bureau and saying, hey, is, is this company a good company? Is, is it trustworthy? Are there any black marks in the Better Business Bureau uh, record there? So what it is is a scoring system uh, initially rolled out. Uh, uh, well, actually, it, the plan is to make it a national system. But they've been experimenting, as the Chinese are wont to do for programs like this, uh, they've been experimenting around the country with it for, for some years now. And uh, so, so variety, uh, probably three-fourths of the provinces now have their own, uh, I'll, I'll use the term social credit system. They have their own social credit system. Um, they plan to roll it out nationwide uh, this coming year, 2020. Uh, I think they've got a long way to go before they get there. Uh, but the idea is that, uh, well, originally it, it was, uh, the original conception of it, if you go back to the 
some of the documents from 2003 when they first started talking about it. Uh, the idea was to uh, uh, promote trustworthiness in business transactions. Um, and uh, that was primarily as between, you know, uh, uh, between individuals or, or, or individuals and companies, what, what have you. Uh, so the, the first uh, uh, wave of uh, activity that came out with, was for individuals. Um, the second wave, and, and it's, being, uh, it's in the sort of implementation phase right now, um, is corporate social credit, if you will. Um, and then the, uh, the third wave that is still kind of vague and ambiguous is government officials. Uh, China has a problem, China has a lot of problems. Everybody has a lot of problems. Right. China yeah. has a problem that when, uh, when Beijing, the central government, comes out with a new law and regulation, uh, 2,000 miles away in, in distant southeast or southwest China, wherever, far, far away from Beijing, they say, I don't care, uh, <laughs> and they ignore it. Uh, really? They, yes. Oh, my gosh. Yes, yes. Uh, okay. uh, a very common phenomenon even in the United States. Uh, I'll tell you a story about that, but that takes too much time, and okay. it's not China. But uh, the farther you are away from Beijing, the less you do what they tell you to do. Oh. Uh, they have a saying in Chinese, uh, uh, Beijing is a long, long ways away. Interesting. Uh, yeah. Interesting. I never yeah. knew that. Yeah. So, so, so we got these three groups then, uh, individuals, uh, businesses, and government. Uh, don't ask me about government because there's no real details on it. Uh, Business is uh, 33 million Chinese companies have been reviewed wow. and given a, a, a score. Uh, and millions and millions of uh, individuals uh, at the local level have been given a score by the local government. Uh, uh, so the, the, for the individuals, the big problem they have to overcome, and they, and they know it, is when it rolls out nationwide, they need to standardize the system. Uh, so on the individual level, every province has its own num numerical scoring system. Everyone has uh, uh, different things on their list for uh, good behavior and bad behavior. Uh, everyone has different points they, they deduct from your score for this and that. So it's, it's just, uh, um, there's no standardization. Okay, so, so it was originally a nation, uh, a nationwide idea, I guess, for oh, Beijing. Absolutely. absolutely. And they sent it out to the provinces. Yeah. And then the provinces have come up individually all over the place with their own system. Yes. And yeah. now they're trying to, are they trying to combine it, or is it? Uh, well, yes, it, it, it will be, it will be a, a national system. Yeah. Uh, the uh, a, a problem, as they see it, is that a lot of this information about individuals, well, work with just individuals, a lot of information about individuals is siloed. Uh, it, it's siloed within a province. It's siloed within an agency in the province. Uh, under the new system, all this information gets fed up, uh, uh, up, up the, the line to a national database. Okay, and, and this is all going to be based on technology of some sort, I guess. Is that right? I mean, yes. It, it, it's it, not it, handwritten it, stuff. It's computerized uh, or uh, inputted. No, it's not. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, uh, so until very recently, every Chinese citizen uh, had a dossier kept on them wow. in their hometown by the government officials. So it, it's, okay. a, it's, a, it's a paper file. I see. Uh, I recently had a, I had a friend who recently, he's an American now, uh, she went to her hometown and uh, she'd gotten friendly with the government. So she asked if she could have her dossier. Uh, and they gave it to her. Huh. And it was full of all kinds of, you know, well, she, 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 she's, a, she, she's a good person, so she never got in trouble with anybody. Uh, but uh, so comments, she, I guess. It, it, just comments, notations, you know, top student in this class, whatever. Uh, but just a dossier on, on everybody, but hard okay. copy. Okay. Uh, so so the, the, there, there's always been a hard copy dossier on, I see. Pe on people. Uh, so the idea of the, this nationwide database, it'll be a uh, digital, searchable, uh, open to the public database. Wow. Okay. Uh, so you, you can, uh, if I want to enter into a contract with Mark Shklov, rather than shaking hands with him and signing a piece of paper, well, I'll do that also. But I'll do a little due diligence. I'll, I'll check out your social credit score and, and see if you're a, a trustworthy person. Okay, now I want to ask some follow-up questions because yeah. you, you know a lot of the stuff you said, 
I mean, you, you said that it, this was for business reasons. Yes. Why? What do we need to, I mean, what did they need to protect? What was the issue or what issues are the problems that they felt needed uh, to be monitored or to uh, fix that this system came to, into existence? Well, that for. comes to my, my, my favorite phrase that came out in 2014, that to be trustworthy is glorious and to be untrustworthy is disgraceful. Okay. Uh, China has been described in the West and, and, and even within China, but this is an English phrasing of it, a low trust society. Hmm. There's not a lot of trust out there. Um, is that within the society in, or outside? Within the, okay. within the society, within okay. China. Oh, well. okay. And, and that, that's there for a number of reasons. But the one I think is maybe the most important one is uh, private business in China is a new phenomenon. Uh, okay. It really didn't start until the early 1980s. Um, so they, there's, uh, they, they haven't really uh, built up a... Uh, well, they call it a, a, a social consciousness of being trustworthy. Okay. Uh, so the government looks around and they, they see these problems that they've been trying to combat, the government trying to combat, um, uh, intellectual property theft within Chinese companies, mm. um, uh, fraud, misrepresentation, uh, the big uh, powdered milk scandal uh, uh, some years back. Uh, and they keep trying to sort of uh, come up with a, a way to... Uh, make people more trustworthy and, and, and to uh, impart to them the uh, importance of being trustworthy. So, so it's really an economic background in, in a way. Primar what, primarily what eco eco economic. Rather than social, but it's kind of combined. Uh, yes, <laughs> I, I, I think the, the original concept of it back in 2003 was sort of an economic one, build up, build up trust. Uh, over, the, uh, over the years, it is, is, and, and this is a, a typical way, I think I mentioned before, for China to roll out a new program. Uh, when they started uh, uh, rolling out uh, 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 leasehold property, so you could actually hold a leasehold interest in, in land uh, some years back, 30 years ago. Uh, they experimented in, in, in various places around China before they rolled it out nationwide. This is exactly what they're doing here. So they're, they experimented uh, in, in a number of places. Uh, so in 2003, sort of the first real vague concept paper comes out. And it, it talks about business, but it also talks about just sort of um, social relationships, if you will. Um, fast forward, and, and, and in 2014, they, they did a big study. You know, how, how's it working? And how's, just, how's the How's the social credit system I within uh, coming the along? I see. And, and, and um, big surprise, they said, yeah, we, we got a lot of big issues. Um, uh, how trustworthy is the data, for example? Um, uh, uh, total lack of uh, standardization. <laughs> a number of things to work on. So there was a big meeting in August of this year, uh, in, in, I think up in Beijing, and uh, they are drafting a social credit law. And mm -hmm. we're expecting the draft to come out sometime in 2020. And uh, so you're going to ask me a lot of questions, and I'm going to say, wait until the, the law comes out to sort of well, settle well, this. Well, let me ask you a question about something you mentioned that came up, I think, in, yeah. in, in 2004, that motto. Being trustworthy, well, and that, glorious. Where, where did that come up, or how did uh, that? Where did where did yeah, that yeah, start? Yeah, so the first time I saw that, being trustworthy, said that being trustworthy is, is glorious. glorious. Being, being non-trustworthy is disgraceful. Okay. So uh, it, 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 the first document I saw it in the social credit context where it was the 2014 uh, oh, okay. um, uh, review of how's it working. I think the, the earliest time I remember it cropping up was uh, um, back in the late 1970s, early 80s. Uh, the leader of China then, the, the fellow that, that modernized, that brought capitalism to China, yeah. uh, Deng Xiaoping, yeah. came up with a, with, with a slogan, being rich is glorious, uh, <laughs> which meant it's okay to be a millionaire. It's okay, yeah. Because okay. seriously, uh, under, under commun pure communism, or, I'm not a political scientist, but under Marxism, communism, whatever, we don't, we don't like rich people. Right. Uh, but Deng Xiaoping said, to be rich is glorious. We gave it a break. As, you know, within the society, it, it's okay to yeah. be successful. It's okay to, to make be, money. To be financially successful in, 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 in a private economy. Yeah. Because uh, from 49 till uh, 78, there, there was no private economy. Okay. Now, we're going to take a break right now.
for a minute. We'll be right back and figure out where we're going with this social credit system in China. Thank you very much. We'll be right back. Thanks to our ThinkTech underwriters and grantors, the Atherton Family Foundation, Carol Mon Lee and the Friends of ThinkTech, the Center for Microbial Oceanography Research and Education, Collateral Analytics, the Cook Foundation, Duane Carisu, the Hawaii Council of Associations of Apartment Owners, Hawaii Energy, the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum, Hawaiian Electric Company, Integrated Security Technologies, Galen Ho of BAE Systems, Kamehameha Schools, MW Group Limited, the Scheidler Family Foundation, the Sydney Stern Memorial Trust, Volo Foundation, Yuriko J. Sugimura. Thanks so much to you all. Welcome back. I'm Mark Shklov, host of Law Across the Sea. And I am talking with Larry Foster today about China's social credit system. And we have been kind of discussing basically what it is. And uh, it's supposed to be enacted, I guess, this 2020. Uh, OK, Larry, um, what are the, you know, what are the benefits and detriments that you can receive from being in this system? Uh, what do you have to do to be good? What do you have to do to be bad? I don't know if those are the right words, or glorious mm -hmm. and untrustworthy, yeah. or, yeah. or blacklist or red list. Black, OK, All yeah. right. please explain. Yeah, uh, so uh, this is one of the, the, the issues that was raised in the 2014 report, uh, that there's a lot of ways you, your score can be lowered, uh, a few ways it can be raised. Uh, but even if you have a high social score, let's take the individual level, what's the benefit of having a high social credit score? Uh, probably the primary benefit is uh, not having a low social credit score. So, so, so what, what's, what's the downside of having a, a, a low social yeah, credit score? Yeah, okay. So for example, um, if you want to go online and book, a, uh, book an air ticket uh, online, or a, uh, a today, a book a, an air ticket or a, a train ticket, uh, you will be denied uh, the ability to do that uh, because you've been blacklisted. If you have a low score. If you have a low social credit score. Um, um, on the business side, it's a little clear, but still fuzzy what the benefits are. And, and come back to the 2014 report. It said, you know, it's really not clear what the benefits are. We need more, we need more carrots uh, to encourage people to, other than saying, well, uh, you, you don't get you don't get in trouble uh, for having a, uh, a high credit score if you don't. Uh, so they, they they see there's a need to add more carrots. So on on the business side, for example, um, businesses are reviewed all the time by by Chinese government as their regular reviewing of your business uh, thing. Um, and uh, in theory, then if you have a high uh, corporate social credit score, uh, those those uh, 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 reviews come less frequently. If you have okay. a low corporate uh, or reviews you're come under more scrutiny, more, more frequently. Uh, so the good news is, if you're, if you're a lawyer or a consultant, um, is we, we have laws in Hawaii, in the United States, we call um, uh, uh, full employment laws for lawyers. <laughs> um, this has created a, a whole area for lawyers and consultants of, and we'll make it on, on the uh, uh, corporate side, comply, comply, comply. Uh, a lot of people don't comply with all the rules and regulations in, in China, uh, Chinese businesses and Western businesses. Now, if you don't comply, you don't just get a mean letter, you get put down lower on the list. And if you're lower on the list, again, you, you get reviewed more often. Uh, if you wa want to get business loans, you, you might get denied a business loan. Uh, uh, so there, there, there's a lot of, again, they, they need to come up with more carrots. Because uh, I think they got plenty of sticks already. Okay, so but but you say it's kind of opened up a a, a new area of business also for yeah. lawyers and exactly. perhaps facilitators and it's, maybe even a new you know uh, trustworthy uh, consultant or something like that. Ab maybe ab 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 absolutely. Yeah. Um, 
the uh, let, me, let me come back to things uh, again. It's, a, it's all at the local level, and, and there's some really kind of fun things at the local level. So uh, in, in Shanghai, for example, a few years ago they uh, passed a local regulation that you must sort your garbage. So you got you got to separate <laughs> your got to separate your, your recyclables <laughs> from your 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 garbage, uh, and uh, not everybody does that. But guess what? Your social credit score gets lowered uh, because you didn't do that. Uh, but the I think the the, the big the, the bigger national emphasis is going to be on things like fraud and and, and, and corruption. Uh, non-compliance. And better to do business. Now, I want to take a look at a couple of photos we got. Yeah. Uh, first yeah. one, first image uh, that we have. What, what, explain what this is. Yeah, so uh, this is in, 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 a, in a town uh, uh, 20 minutes by high-speed train from Shanghai, a town called Sudro. And uh, this is their local social credit bureau. Uh, it's provincial a provincial one? Or, the, or it's a city uh, one? City. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a municipal, municipal one. Wow. Uh, it's actually a, br a brick and mortar. Yes. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Uh, because the uh, the, uh, the the national system has not been launched yet. Uh, they're going through a, a number of uh, contests for uh, 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 app developers to develop apps for the for, for the smartphones, so that it, when it, when it goes digital nationally, you don't have to go to the bureau anymore to find out about Mark Schlaw. You just call, you know, just type in Mark Schlaw, and it'll spit out. Uh, uh, what your score is and what you've done good or bad. It's open to the public. Yeah. It'll be a public, public database. Okay, uh, now and on that image, people can go to a brick and mortar place and yes. actually ask questions about your score and that type of thing? Yeah. Okay, and yeah. Uh, let's take a look at the next image. Uh, well, yeah, so okay. this is the, uh, uh, this is the uh, counter inside the bureau. I'm not sure if this comes from Sujo or not, but basically it's the, uh, uh, social credit score um, uh, uh, searching for your social credit score would be, be a rough translation of it. So we actually have a new new agency set up on this to deal with it. Yeah. And I, will this become part of the national uh, system, or how, how do well, do you know? Uh, um, wait, wait until twenty twenty. Wait until twenty twenty. Okay. I should I should have known that. Yeah. Okay. Now what what. What is the red list again? What, what so, is that? So the red list is if, you, if you've been good. Okay. And, and, and again, so you can get... Uh, That's the carrots. The, the carrots. So you, sometimes you can get uh, you know, discounts on a, on a mortgage loan. Uh, 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 you, can, you can get uh, preferential treatment if you want to get a passport to go travel. Uh, you know, you get to go to the, not the, maybe not the front of the line, but you get you know, uh, uh, easier to, to process that. Uh, Okay. Uh, that, 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 that request. Okay, now let, let, let's say I'm on the blacklist. Yes. Can I appeal that, or can I go anywhere to ask, hey, come on, please, and this is wrong, or that's a mistake, or something like yeah. that, do you know? Wait until 2020. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, so uh, that's, that's one of the criticisms, uh, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and, and sort of an abstract criticism. Are you able to adjust your social credit score? So, for example, I was talking to somebody in Shanghai, and uh, uh, they knew about U.S. credit scores. And they said, if you have a, a, a black mark on your U.S. credit score, you can contact the agency, find out what the issue is. And you know, if it is something like, well, you never paid off the loan, well, you can take in your loan documents and, or email them in and show, I paid off the loan, and they'll make the adjustment. So, so arguably, that will be part of the new, uh, and, and the new hey, system. By the way, it could also be a new uh, place of business for law firms, too. Yeah. If, if China follows that course because lawyers in the United States sometimes find a cause of action if there's been something improper yeah. that, that has been uh, said on your credit score, if yeah. you will. Yeah. Um, now, uh, our, I got a, a couple kind of in, intertwined. Our, you, so we don't know about how, how the government will work now. I mean, if you're a, a high-level person, are you going to get on a list or not? Is that, uh, you don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Right, wait till 2020, okay. Yeah. How, 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 how about if, if you're outside the country? I mean, how about if you're a company in America that has a low credit rating, are they gonna care about that? Or are you gonna, uh, or how about Taiwan and, and Yeah, so uh, uh, wait until 2020, but <laughs> uh, arguably it'll just be for uh, Chinese company, uh, not, not, not foreign company. Uh, Although on the on the on the corporate credit side, if you uh, if you have contracts with companies that have low ratings, 
Guess what happens to your rating? It goes down. I see. Oh. And that also includes U.S. companies, for example? Or you don't, un you don't un know? Un okay. Unclear. Okay, but un un that unclear. could be, I mean, it seems to me that would be a logical uh, connection. In other words, you should check out who you're dealing with everywhere. Absolutely. Because if you uh, deal with someone who is uh, a, a low credit rating in the United States, yeah. and you be, bring them to China, it could hurt the business or yeah. the economy. Yeah. So, so part of what they're trying to do, and uh, the parallel is back to when, when they were developing the modern legal system. They, they spent a lot of time, and they still are, a lot of time and energy teaching the people to give them a legal social consciousness, to know about their legal rights and, and penalties you know, under the law. We educate the people that we, we are now a country of laws. There's some discussion about that. But from their side, you know, we need to teach you that there's a legal system and uh, you need to, you know, people should, you know, uh, 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 you know, if you have a contract dispute, you should go to court and you know, how courts work and how to file a lawsuit and, and, and all these things. So they, they spent a lot of time and energy building up a legal consciousness. The 2014 report says we've got a long ways to go on building a trust consciousness in, in, in Chinese people. That, A, you're, the way people review you as being not trustworthy or trustworthy uh, is important, and the way you view others is important. So we got this, this new thing they need to educate the people. Uh, and about. it has a while to go, and yeah, it's being yeah. developed as yeah. we talk. Now, I've yeah. heard some criticism of this social uh, system, uh, uh, using the word social. We have anything comparable in the United States, or have you, I mean, especially this time of year, is there anything that yeah. you can think of well, that well, would, would meet our, kind of be the similar? You're, you're rushing into slides three and four, but, okay. but, but, but before you get there, let me, let, let me, let me talk about the, the uh, um, broad criticisms of, of, of the program. Uh, the first one comes from a, a group in the United States called the ACLU, and they're very concerned, they issued a, an alert a couple of years ago that this social credit thing is coming out and it's going to oppress the Chinese people and China's headed to a dystopian future. Uh, that, that everything you do is going to be wind up on, the, on, on, this, on, this, on this list. So they're very much against it. The government view I already talked about, they're focused initially primarily on, on business. Uh, I talked to a number of Chinese about it and I'll call it the uh, 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 cynical pragmatist, pragmatist. And, and that's summed up by, who cares? There's nothing I can do about it. Uh, you know, the Chinese government on things like this, they, they do not do a survey. What do you think, guys? Do you think this is a good, good deal? Uh, they're not going to do that. Uh, so it, it's coming regardless of what you think. OK, so because it's the time of year, let's yes. close with the last slide uh, about what we have here in America. Ah. So my, my working theory is that all this started with Gene Autry in 1947. <laughs> uh, he came up with a song about Santa Claus and uh, became very popular, and it's very popular today, and highlighted in red. We Chinese love the, the color red. Uh, he's making a list. I won't sing it. He's making a list, checking it twice. He's going to find out who's naughty or nice. And based on your behavior, your social behavior, you will receive a, a lump of coal or... Or, or a train as, as, a, uh, as a toy. Larry, thank you so much for explaining that to us and uh, look forward to finding out what happens in 2020. Maybe we'll have you back to, yeah. to tell us the answers. Yeah. Thank okay. you very much. Thank Aloha, you. Aloha, everybody. We'll see you in another, probably in the new year, for another Law Across the Sea program. Thank you very much. Yeah.